Hello and welcome back to Off the Crossbar Euros Watch Day 9 with myself, Regan Walsh, and as ever, my co presenter, Brad. Well, we've had the final bit of action on match day 2. Eh, it was so so, wasn't it? I'd argue it was one of the better days of the tournament. Thank Christ, because I feel like crap. <laughs> and I need all the football that can kill me. Yes. Uh, so we had obviously the other one game in Group E, which is Spain Poland, and then we had the Group of Death games. And we'll start off with the Group of Death because we'll do it in time order. And Hungary played France in a full, once again, packed out stadium in Budapest, which was obviously a lovely thing to see. Quite end to end the first half, you've got to say. Both teams definitely had chances. Yeah, this is where I confess I I missed the first half. Although, although no, I did see the goal because I think it was up to like the thirty seventh minute. I then started watching, mm. and then Hungary went in and scored. So yeah, but what I heard, Hungary had done pretty decent. Yeah, they were very much in the game in that first half. A lot more than they were in the opener against. Well, not even really, because even against Portugal, they had chances, but they looked more promising in this one. Uh, and then their goal from Attila uh, Fiola, beautiful ball over the top towards him. Benj- he had Benjamin Pavard on the wrong side of him, got past him, and then uh, Rafa Varane couldn't come across to make a tackle, and he slots it past Hugo Lloris in the goal to give them a very surprised lead going in at half time. And I think surprise isn't the only, I don't think France were the only ones surprised by that because I think that journalist. Yes, I was going to bring it up. I wanted to bring her up because she got us the thumbnail. <laughs> no. Jeez, I don't think I've ever seen anyone scared as much as her. It was that much of, time. oh shit, wait, what? <laughs> oh, the camera, <laughs> yay, goal. I think she was too busy focusing on the work she was doing rather than uh, paying attention to the actual celebrations and that's so, what's caught her off guard. It's such a weird place to just sit and watch the game. That's, you'd be, I thought she was just a fan at first. Yeah. It was like a special fan area, does it? No, but she had some... I, I don't know why... I, I thought the more impressive thing was that he jumped over the barrier, or whatever yeah. it was you call it. The whole <laughs> advertising hoarding. It could have been very badly if he just got his foot caught on it and then head first on the table. Yeah. And did up some like, WWE shit there. Um, uh, yeah, very good tar from them, and obviously they would be a lot, a lot happier uh, going into the break one nil up, and then in the second half, France definitely looks like they needed to get that win, and definitely pressed on for it in that second half. I mean, they got the equaliser just after the hour mark through Antoine Griezmann. I mean, it was a nice goal from Griezmann. Uh, very weird celebration from the lad, but I mean, he does very weird celebrations anyway. It's Fortnite still in. It's not really, is it? No. no. But, uh, then that last 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, the French just seemed to lose the, the somethingness in them to... Somethingness. That's not a yes. word in the Oxford Dictionary, but... <laughs> it is now. Maybe the Urban Dictionary will let you off. But... Yeah. The... No, I thought they did decent. But the second they equalised, I thought... They're going to win this now. Normal service has resumed. Yeah. But Hungary managed to be uh, as resolute as ever and held on for the draw. Yeah, the fair question. But they could have even had the chances to win it. Yeah. They carried pretty well. Very well. Uh, but I think Mbappe and Benzema both missed chances uh, as well. And <laughs> I mean, It's completely out of context that the start of Benzema not having scored for six years. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, like, how many of those years has he played France? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But, um, you yeah, know, as it stands uh, at the end of pl- uh, play in that match day, France are top of the group on four points, whilst Hungary are bottom on one point. So all four teams in that group can still go through uh, heading into the final match day, which will take place later on this week. Uh Group E now saw Spain, Poland. Sorry, that was a late game, wasn't it? I was going to say, if you want to hold the big one to the end. <laughs> no, we'll do it now, actually. I'll go in order. Um, next up was the other group of death match. Probably 
the most entertaining game we've had so far between Portugal and Germany uh, from the Allianz Arena in Munich. Portugal took uh, the lead after 15 minutes through Cristiano Ronaldo after a nice bit of counter-attack play and Diogo Jota squared the ball to him. That is after Germany did think they were 1-0 up through Kai Havertz, was it? I thought it was, was Gossens. Gossens, yes, but uh, Serge Gnabry was offside uh, in the build-up, so that was yeah. the correct decision there. But, uh, so the, what is it with Ronaldo and unreal counter-attacks? Yeah, I mean... The, have you seen the video where it just shows him like the time he left his own box to the time he got up to the Germany okay. box? It was just, I think it was like nine, ten seconds or so. No, ITV carried it at 14. From yeah. him getting there and then to the goal itself. Like. Yeah, I think I, one I saw was him just going from box to box rather than uh, the end finish as well, which was like, even at his age, what's he now, 35, 36? 36, I thought. Yeah, it's just mad impressive how he managed to do that that quickly. We've already said enough how much of a freak of nature the bloke is. Yeah. yeah. However, it's... go on, I'll let you finish this quickly enough. No, I can't really follow that. Up. <laughs> it's right. just a freak. Yeah. However, it wasn't all. It was just nice uh, they gave you flashbacks there. <laughs> yes. Oh, don't get me started on that goal against Arsenal. You would have told that. Yes. Um... It wasn't all uh, sunshine and happy ways for Portugal as 20 minutes later, Ruben Dias. Oh, Ruben Dias. Was this fault? I thought Jeremy Brown scored, if I'm honest. Well, yeah, I mean, I did initially think uh, Germany did it did uh, score from, I think, was it, I think that might have been Havertz that time. Yeah, that was, seems to be everywhere. Like us yeah. across the attack. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was probably one of his best games he's played. Cause he, mm. Like you said, he did seem to be everywhere. Uh, but the ball took a flex. I just found it a bit weird that it was all the Chelsea fans. Because I was like, made in Chelsea. It was like, he was at Leverkusen before you lot. Like, <laughs> and he didn't do much at you lot last season. Um, but yeah, Ruben Diaz slid it into his own net to uh, put Germany level. And then a few minutes later, it goes from bad to worse for Portugal. As this time, Rafa Guerrero puts the ball into his own net. Both centre halves wanted a goal, it seems, in this tournament. I mean, so that we've had more own goals than we've had penalties scored. Yeah, that's just that's... ridiculous. <laughs> I think we've already been on the record for own goals at a major tournament. I think we may be one off it now. It's there. Yeah, it's got to be there. Yeah, I think we're either tied or just one off it, or it may have just gone over it, uh, because of yesterday's game. But either way, it is absolutely uh, crazy to see. And I think. Once they'd went a goal down, I think Germany always looked like they were going to get back into the game, I thought. Yeah, it did. Well, it, I guess it seemed like that. But Portugal's yeah. defence just seemed to disappear. Yeah, it just capitulated in, right in front of their eyes. Uh, and then, what, barely five minutes into the second half, Gossens puts in a lovely ball for Kai Havertz to actually score this time. And, I mean... Them two, that whole game, were just Germany standout players, weren't they? Gossens and Havertz. Yeah. Well, Martin, this was Gossens' standout because there not really anyone knew much about him before going into this tournament. Yeah, I mean, he had a good season uh, at Atalanta over in uh, Italy. But yeah, this what two games that they've played so far, he's been absolutely immense for him, especially uh, yesterday. And then... Nine minutes after Tony Provider, he managed to get a goal himself after uh, Joshua Kimmich put in a ball and he headed it past Rui Patricio in uh, goal. So, where do, we, where do we go on the criminal defending first? Because, well, yeah. Like, nobody went for Rafa Silva, he just let him walk past him. And he yeah. saw that he walked past him and just didn't follow. Yeah, it was just, he won't score an easy goal, will he? Because it was that poor defending. I was baffled when it went, I was like, you watched him walk past you? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Uh, and then uh, Germany looked quite comfortable for a couple minutes, but then Ronaldo turns to provider and gives Diogo Jota a goal to give Portugal a bit of lifeline, you'd think. And secretly, Ronaldo was furious because it looked like it was going in. 
Yeah, I don't know whether it was. It was good. Do. I think it was going to spin him. <laughs> <He's> just... <laughs> yeah, Scott. Oh, Diogo, you little shit. Uh, but yeah, I think Germany could have scored a bit more after that, but I think they knew also they didn't want to concede because, like we said yesterday in the preview, they needed to win this game to have any hope of uh, potentially going through to the knockout stages. And they have just done that because with their win, they leapfrog Portugal uh, based on having a better record than the Portuguese, whilst Hungary uh, remain at the bottom. So anyone can go through in that group and anyone can finish what which is uh, i don't think many people expected that yeah but it's just nice to see that the group of death has quite a few permutations going into it next week yeah i mean although they have the worst goal difference theoretically if hungary were to win their game for nil they could still potentially finish top of their group which is I, mean, it, it, I would ridiculous. love that. I would love that. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy to think so. Uh, that's something crazy as that can happen. But yeah, we now head into the final set round of fixtures where all the games will be kicking off at the same time in each group. Uh, yesterday was the final 2 pm kickoff we, as well for the tournament now. So we now oh. just got five and eight. Devastating. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself or the rest of the time once we've done this. What are we all going to do today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do have some football on at five o'clock uh, UK time, that is, and that is Group A playing their final game. So as it stands... So would you, the... we just completely got to go over Spain and Poland. <laughs> 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 completely, you just went past it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Before we jump on to today's match, because I started talking about them before Portugal, Germany, in my head we'd already talked about it. That's why. I got on there. Yes. So, so even at fifty percent, I'm still on it. Yes. Uh, the eight o'clock kickoff saw Spain take on Poland from Seville. Not the most entertaining games. It wasn't. It was pretty drab. Yeah. Uh, Spain just. Uh, so meh. Yeah. Uh, they did score after 25 minutes after a great ball from Gerard Moreno to find Alvaro Morata, who uh, put it past Wojciech Chesney, though initially he did think it was offside until they saw the replay where you could see he was onside. Because I don't, know, I don't know what that defender was doing, why he had his legs so far stretched out for. Yeah, God knows. Uh, but yeah, Spain dominated possession for... 90% of the game. However, five minutes, ten minutes into the second half, Lewandowski equalised for Poland with a great header from a Camille Jozciak cross. Um, and that See, was pretty much it. Apart from... So you feed the man and he will score. Oh, yeah. Uh, Spain did have a penalty... When, how long ago? Into the second half, was it? I can't remember. I can't really remember, but it was the first attack after Poland's equaliser. Yes. Uh, don't know why Danny Murphy's saying, well, I don't know, that's a foul. Well, yeah. Fully it's... stands on his ankle. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. Uh, literally, the 57th minute was awarded, and the penalty itself wasn't bad. I think it was a good pen. Yeah, it was a good pen. Unfortunate not to score, but then Avara <laughs> Morata on the follow yeah. Jesus Christ. It's just the same. He's got the Spanish Werner to... <laughs> Yeah, the rebound. Yeah. I mean... I mean, the yeah. right had a pretty decent game. Yeah, I think everyone gave him the credit is due. I think what Enrique said pretty much was uh, quite good. Apparently, he said, uh, we're playing with Alvaro Morata and 10 other players tomorrow. And that seemed to give Morata the confidence to go out and score, which... Is it, are you sure that was a confidence boost? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yeah. sure that's how it was interpreted. Well, Morata seemed to take it that way as he went over to celebrate with... He uh, could take it out every once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, literally, as soon as that game finished, I thought, this Spain team isn't the... I know different players from a decade ago, from when they were dominating world football, but they're just bang average, this team. The golden generation is done. People have to now accept that. 
like I said to you, are Spain potentially the worst team at this tournament? It's nice that we got one prediction right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, oh, it's so poor to watch. Them. Yeah, but it's, it's easy for teams to just manage against them. Yeah. yeah, literally all they're doing is dominating possession, and that's it. Like they're having chances, I mean... Have a look at uh, the game last night against Poland. They had twelve shots to Poland's five, whilst they only had five on target, and Poland had two. So it's only slightly better in terms of accuracy by one point seven percent. But it's just they're just boring to watch. Yeah, and it's potentially going to cost them because the way the group is, they pretty much have to beat Slovakia. Yeah. Which well, they could even, do. They could still do that pretty easily. I mean, not even that. They could still go out as not one of the best third place teams because, I mean, Switzerland are on one point, Croatia well, are on one point. Well, they are bottom. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're, they're, the third, they're the third worst third place team out of uh, all the groups, but. Uh, and like you said, they could actually still finish bottom if Poland get a victory and Spain were to lose their yeah. game, or yeah. even draw and Poland win, they would still go out. It's pretty clear now that four points is the measuring stick for third place. Yeah, and they have draw. to win. Yeah, a draw doesn't do it for Spain in the final uh, group game later on this week. Right, actually, on to today's football now. Uh, group A concludes. Both games kick off at five o'clock, uh, starting off with Italy-Wales, first versus second in the group. Italy have looked phenomenal so far in this tournament, won both games 3-0. Locatelli, Svinazzola, Insigne, Giorginio, they've all looked absolutely fabulous. Like, uh, they've surprised, I think, a lot of uh, media that don't watch the Italian national team. Well, yeah, but we've all been completely surprised by them. Yeah. But if we'd have watched the four, we'd have gone. Actually, they're probably one of the favourites. Yeah. Uh, that, as much as there's not a lot on the line in this Wales game, it's just whoever tops. The group, no, I, yeah. I'm still very intrigued for it. Yeah. Um, Wales themselves have played some decent football over their two games, uh, getting a win and a draw. Haven't looked too, too uh, bad, I think, the likes of. Bale, Dan James, Joe Morrell, or Joe Morrell, uh, have looked really good. Uh, you, you did introduce him right there, did you? Sorry, Luton Towns, Joe uh, Morrell. Sure. Yeah, uh, I think. And then there's the other game. Yeah, Switzerland, Turkey. Uh, like I said, Switzerland are one of the worst teams in terms of the third place placements, but a win, sure. a win helps them. Yeah. They'll get on the four points, they get it. It's just uh, potentially goal difference could ruin them because they're on uh, minus three. Yeah. And then looking at uh, some of the other teams uh, in third place, the next worst is Croatia on minus one in terms of goal difference. So they'd need to have a big victory against Turkey. who, Which is very much possible. Yeah, because like we said, Turkey are the worst team in this tournament. They haven't offered anything at all. They'd be pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but then again, Turkey themselves could still finish in that third place spot. I know it's unlikely for them to turn that goal difference around, but considering how they've played in that tournament. But yeah, you got to say, Swiss, the Swiss are favourites to finish third, and then it's just a matter of Italy and Wales who finishes top, and then what that does for uh, the latter stages. They're the only two games on today. I know. And they're both at five o'clock, which means we have nothing for two o'clock and nothing at eight o'clock. What the hell are we going to do? I, uh, I uh, forgot what I did before the games. I know, I know. We're literally we're only what nine days into the tournament, but I've got so used to watching three games a day now. It just feels weird not having anything to watch at two and eight. Slightly back to normality. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so... I could just sleep. Probably going to do that. <laughs> uh, looking back at our predictions from yesterday, we were wrong with uh, the first two games. France uh, winning, we had, and that was obviously a draw, and Portugal winning, Germany won that. But at least 
Spain Poland we got right in terms of it being a draw. Um, two games today. How do you see it going? Italy win against Wales. Yeah. And I do think Switzerland beat Turkey. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with a draw in the first game. It's not bold. I think it's going to be a score draw. And then, yeah, I'm going to agree. The Swiss beat Turkey. If you get that draw spot on, I'm going to have to start asking you for the lottery numbers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Any other news around the world of football that we may have missed? Um, And... Barcelona confirmed the signing of Memphis Depay on a two-year deal. Uh, so he'll join them on the 1st of July once his contract with Leon officially ends. Uh, apart from that, nothing else has happened. Yeah. Been quiet still. Yeah. Nothing oh. too out there. Got his Spurs still don't have a manager. Everton still don't have a manager. Yeah. Right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to round up Group A's action and have a look forward to... Uh, the games taking place in uh, Group B and C, because we actually have uh, two sets of games tomorrow, so the 8 o'clock re- does return tomorrow, which is fortunate for us, because I don't know what I'd do with myself if I didn't have that 8 o'clock in the evening. Right, until then, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Go follow us on Twitter, at off. TC pod for all tweets Euro related and any potential transfer and managerial news from around the world of football. And until tomorrow, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Brad. See ya. I'm off to bed. <laughs> and we'll see you soon.